Hey guys, what's going on? So I am here in a brisk autumn evening checking out a pretty cool bike. It is the E-Tura from Furrow Systems. Uh, now, as you can see, the bike is pretty small. That's really the big part about it in, in an odd way. So let's go ahead and check out some of the details, get on the bike, take it for a spin, because it's actually, in all honesty, the lightest electric bike I have ever been on. Lightest ever. So let's take a look. All right, so if you haven't heard of Furrow Systems before, they have quite a few electric bikes, but this one is, I don't know if it's their flagship model, but it's definitely one of their most peculiar. Uh, so this one uh, from Furrow Systems here is a really, really lightweight electric bike. This thing weighs 28.25 pounds. That's what I was able to measure myself, including the battery pack. Uh, that's on there. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got a carbon fiber frame and I'm sure a lot of this is aluminum. I couldn't find any steel on here. <laughs> you know, I had my magnet up to it. Couldn't find any steel, but it's really lightweight. Uh, when you have the battery out, especially, it feels like all you're doing is picking up the weight of this motor. It seems like that's the only thing you pick up. It's really kind of an eerie feeling <laughs> in all honesty when you pick this guy up. Uh, very, very lightweight. I think some of the lightest electric bikes that I've ridden thus far are around the 30 pound, like 30, maybe like 32 to 35 pound mark. Uh, there's not a whole lot that break that without getting into uh, a scooter or a skateboard or something like that, but this one does. So I definitely would not call this a full size bike. <laughs> I think that's very obvious. This thing is diminutive. That's the word I would use to describe this, a minuscule perhaps. Uh, but this thing is super, super tiny. And it might not seem all that tiny by itself, but when you see someone standing next to it, it, especially when you see somebody riding it, it looks really, really tiny. It feels that way too. I gotta say, when you're riding the bike, it definitely has a peculiar way of riding. Uh, a lot of your weight, or a lot of the total weight is way up high um, because that's the weight of the rider. Uh, but let's go ahead and talk about some of the details and then we'll get into the ride characteristics. So the bike is pretty simple as well, and that's how they keep the, uh, the weight down on it. So what you got right down here is a set of cantilever brakes. Uh, these are just some regular pad brakes that you're more or less comfortable with, or sorry, familiar with, from you know, bikes from the past that you may have used. Not terribly common on uh, electric bikes because generally you want to have a nice set of disc brakes for an electric bike because they are heavy bicycles and because they go fast. Now in this case, the bike is uh, electronically speed limited. Right now, this is uh, a European uh, setting, I believe. It's capped at 25 uh, kilometers per hour, so it doesn't go terribly fast, uh, which is actually a good thing for these brakes. Um, but on the other end of that, this is a lightweight bicycle. Um, so with both of those things accounted for, you can actually get away with some rim brakes and it's not that big of a thing. It's still fairly safe, still stops pretty well because you're not going really far on a heavy bicycle. So that's actually a pretty cool thing. Uh, so the tires on this guy are a 14 inch, which is pretty small. One of the smaller tires before you go with just like a stoker wheel for a kid's bike. Uh, so it's a 14 inch diameter by 1.75 for the tire width. So fairly good width, which adds, you know, the most important aspect of comfort to uh, this ride. Because as you can see, there's no suspension on the bike other than the fact that you got a little bit of wide tires and the bicycle itself puts a lot of the... Uh, it, Kind of, it has like a lot of joints to it. You know, it feels a little flexy. You know, you got a joint here, joint here, joint there, joint there. Normally that's not really a big thing for a lot of uh, folding bikes. Folding bikes definitely have their own peculiar way of handling. But this one is a little bit magnified because it's a lightweight bike and because a lot of these points are really, really low to the ground. And as you can see, when you back up, the bicycle itself is not but, to, but what, maybe like 18 inches, two feet off the ground or something like that. The rest of it is all extended up on those long poles. So because of that, you do get, I guess you could describe it as a little bit of suspension with it, but more or less, it's just kind of a squirrely feeling when you're steering. Uh, so yeah, this is also um, a nice carbon fiber fork uh, that you have up front that's holding this on and a little tiny fender up in the front, a very you know humorous accessory to add onto there. It's nice, you know, they're kind of thinking of you when they put that thing on. Doesn't extend into the front, doesn't have like a little mud flap, but that's okay because it keeps everything nice and light. Uh, so this is uh, a nice little light to go on the front. Has a little blinking operation when you press it down, blinks a little slower or steady. Uh, this has its own battery inside of here. Um, so that's kind of neat that it's not connected to everything in the sense that uh, you don't have a lot of cables coming out. Of course, you do have to replace the battery from time to time. So I think you're accustomed to that. Uh, so coming up here, this is, of course, the stem. It does telescope. Um, so let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, yeah. So this is the lowest position that it can get into. 
And actually, if you put the seat down as well, we'll go ahead and open this one up, kind of lower the seat to something a little more realistic. You don't want the seat post too far down. There we go. And check that out. This is actually a small bike. So provided somebody has a little bit longer arms, not longer than normal, but just long enough arms, this actually could be a cool bike for someone who is short for a little person. And nope, that's not really a joke because when I worked at a bike shop, uh, we had little folks come in and they say, do you have a bike for us? And a lot of times it'd be tough. It'd be tough to find that, but this would actually be a pretty cool option. I definitely want them to try it out, see what they think, if they like it, if it fits their needs or not. But yeah, anyways, that telescoping stem is uh, kind of neat, kind of a folding bike standard. It doesn't go up terribly high without getting caught onto the, um, the cabling here because the cabling does kind of give it its own little realistic cap to what it can go up to. Let's see what we can reach and still be able to steer something about there. Still got to be able to steer the thing. I guess it all comes with it. So that's about a realistic max for what you get right there. The seat can actually go up a lot higher than that. So let's go ahead and check out the seat. Let me go to this side of the bike. We'll hold it up here and embrace it. Open up the seat. Where's the minimum? Minimum is about, whoop, lost it. Minimum is about right there. So yeah, let's take a look at that. Yeah, that would be, <laughs> that's really high, really, really high for somebody to be riding on. And as you can see, the seat is about parallel with the handlebars. So in that position, the rider weight would be forward if you extended these both all the way. But of course, this is really just a fun exercise. It's not really intended to be all that big. Uh, you know, it's more or less a, an average size. It's kind of what they made it for. So uh, continuing on with the mechanical specifications, the uh, handlebars have a little bit tiny back sweep to them. They do kind of bend just a little bit, ever so slightly to come back and meet you. And the grips are pretty cool. They have this ergonomic edge. I actually think the grips are one of the neatest parts about um, the look of the bike, because it's definitely small and everything like that. And the grips are kind of like an added little thing to make it a little bit spacey, which is you know, pretty cool, pretty cool thing. Uh, coming up to the brakes, uh, of course, these are levers. They don't have a electronic disconnect for the motor. I guess that's fine because like I said you're not going to be going terribly fast on a bike like this but one thing that is kind of cool they have an integrated bell along with the brake levers so that's pretty neat I like that when they tuck that in there that way it's not comprising a whole lot of space on the handlebars which is good because you don't have a whole lot of space to begin with <laughs> the display is actually really tiny we'll get to that with the electric system of course here's our government mandated uh, reflector that we have on the front and this is actually a module for the electric system as well. We'll cover that in a little bit. This is pretty neat. Stay tuned. <laughs> so uh, there's a fairly low standover height with the frame right here. Uh, like I said, this can't be much more than what's that like eight, maybe like 20, 16 inches or so off the ground, which is not terribly high. Uh, a lot of folks could get in and get on this thing. Um, now, despite the small size of the entirety of the bike, it has a regular size crank, a 170 millimeter crank with a regular size of pedal that actually does have a folding aspect to it as a folding bike. Um, so the pedals actually um, are kind of a funny comparison because the, the pedals and the cranks look fine and then everything else is so small. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the seat post tube and it actually has a teardrop shape to it. Let's go ahead and pull that out. I'll show you what I mean. So most seat po post tubes are a circle. This little guy is a teardrop shape. So I have a, actually have not seen that on an electric bicycle before. I am presume that this is actually kind of an aerodynamic thing that you might see on a race bike. A uh, really interesting choice to put it onto a folding bike. I presume that it's because of its lightweight that perhaps they make this mod, this seat post tube for a lightweight application. And that's really kind of the goal with this bike is to make it really lightweight. Uh, so yeah, in this area, I'm quite sure comprises the controller for the brains of the operation electrically. And coming back into here, this of course is also a carbon fiber. Coming into a mirrored set for the brakes and also the tires and the, and the rims here. Uh, you don't have a hub motor in the back because the hub motor is up in the front. So not a lot of weight there. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the mechanical drivetrain. Not much to address because you only have a single speed. Uh, you got a cog in the back, which is just nine teeth. And then up in the front, you got 48 teeth uh, up in the front. So yeah, that's about it. Um, not a whole lot to talk about there because it doesn't have any kind of switcher, no shifter, no nothing. So yeah, that's about it for the mechanical system. 
Uh, why don't I show you the electric system and then I'll show you how it works when it's folded up. So we talked a little bit about the motor weight and I talked about the weight of it, but in reality, it's not the biggest, heaviest motor out there. This is a 250 watt uh, geared hub motor and it's up in the front of the bike. And I think that that's all right because like I said, the usage and application of this bike is not terribly intensive. Uh, and also you have the battery weight in the back of the bike over there. Uh, so the battery, let me go ahead and show you how this guy comes off. This is a 36 volt, 8.7 amp hour battery, and it does have a key. So this is a unique key inside of this little covered spot. Go ahead and open this up, put the key inside, then rotate the key to unlock the battery, and then go ahead and pull it up. So, all right, this is the battery. So this little guy back here is actually a light system. Uh, but the battery actually has these two little pins that you see right down there um, that connect to the main uh, controller. And that's it. This is what you carry with you. So let's go ahead and put this back on here. Slide it into position. Really easy. Got that handle on there, which is nice. And then we'll lock it so it stays in. I don't want to hit this with my feet when I'm riding, which is actually kind of a thing. Because if you got big clown shoes like me, then your heels are liable to hit this. But luckily, it does come out. I have seen it before where the key is required to be in the battery. And depending on how they design the bike, it can kind of be a pain. In this case, it's nice that the battery can come out. Also, because you don't really want your keys dangling down here. If you got house keys and everything, I'd be afraid of losing a key fob for my car because by golly, those little key fobs are a lot more expensive to replace than just a simple key. Anyways, I'm kind of getting distracted. So uh, with the electric system, it is a cadence-based pedal assist system. Talked a little bit about that battery right there, about the capacity of it. It's not terribly big. You know, 36 volt is somewhat common, uh, but the smaller amp hours uh, mean that it's not gonna go nearly as far as something with double the capacity or so. But you're still gonna get a fair amount of distance out of this, especially because it's cadence-based pedal assist only. It doesn't have a throttle option, and I'm sure they do that intentionally. This is a class one electric bike, so it is, um, uh, I guess, benefits from all the legal protections that, a, that an electric bike possibly could. So here is the 12 magnet pedal assist sensor, uh, just right there, so it's actually pretty easy to get to. Uh, you might think that it will get gunked up or something, but since these are magnets, that's really not going to affect anything. Besides, got a little fender to protect you too. Uh, so let's go ahead and show you how to use the display. So we have the bike turned on uh, on the key system here. So let's go ahead and use the display. So we'll turn it on by pressing this little orange button on the tippy top there. And this is the display. It's super tiny, really integrated. I actually like simple displays. It tells you your speed. Right now it's set for kilometers. Um, and also your, see your odometer there, your battery level on the bottom left. Pedal assist is on the top left. And you can hit the down arrow and turn it off if you wish. Or you can press the up arrow to go from one, two, three, four, or all the way up to level five. And we'll take that for a spin in a little bit and show you what it's like. Uh, let's go ahead and press the M button and that will cycle through the metrics down there. Uh, so that looks like your kilometers per hour and then like a little display to show your average speed and max speed that it's been cataloging. And you can reset those things when you like. But overall, I mean, it kind of looks big when you put the camera right next to it, but it's pretty small in comparison to the rest of the bike. And even then, this is a small bike to begin with, so it's not really that big in the first place <laughs> when you put all these things together. Another cool thing about this electric system is actually the turn signals. Uh, so this little pad right here, when you press on one of the buttons, you'll see it flash, and then you press it again to turn it off. This actually coincides with the little turn signals down here. And that's on this system that is attached to the battery, but it's actually just resting in place. Let's go ahead and slide this out. So if you wanted to protect it from theft, you can pull it out, but this is your little turn signal package um, or light fixture uh, that goes inside of there. This has its own battery that charges up with a micro USB port. And that's actually why it's not working at the moment because I got to charge it up. I was having a little too much fun. I think I left the uh, turn signal on uh, and just walked away from the bike and let this thing go. Um, but Either way, uh, this is the turn signal thing. We'll see if we can get that thing showing you what it does uh, in a little bit. But let's go ahead and jump on the bike and take it for a ride. My favorite part, and I think that's about everything. We talked about the electric system, the mechanical system. Oh, I should show you how it folds. So let's go ahead and do that before we get too far. First off, we'll start off by putting the pedals in this position. I actually don't know if that's required, but it's a habit of mine to do it this way. <laughs> 
we'll go ahead and lower the uh, seat right there Clamp that down move the handlebars up if i remember correctly we got to get the handlebars vertical so we'll kind of get the brake handles vertical cinch down this is a lot easier with two hands let me tell you we'll drop that by opening up the post putting it in cinching it down this is a very simple lever you press down on the red and then open up that latch and then there we go now we can get this down all right this is already pretty darn small as it is Let's go ahead and... <laughs> and now we'll open up the main latch right here push in on that button open the main latch and then use my knee in place of a hand and then there we go looks like i got to get this guy a little bit out of the way perfect there you go there is your diminutive electric folding bike that is 28 pounds this will easily fit in a trunk um, shoot uh, this would fit in quite a lot of containers might even fit inside of like a trunk of you know the front truck of like an mr2 or something like that or i don't know if you got a glove box quite that big but yeah this is one of the smallest electric bikes i've ever seen there is one more thing i wanted to talk about on the mechanical system and it's actually the kickstand so the kickstand is not mounted in the middle right here it's mounted in the rear which is actually a nice thing because you don't have to worry about pedal lock in which the cranks will come in and come in contact with the uh, kickstand and lock the bike if you're pushing it backwards but there is a drawback on this particular one it is actually viced in here with the main skewer for the uh, or the axle for the hub deck here and you loosen and tighten it up let's see the number five right here so i got my little multi-tool to loosen or tighten that up this actually is fairly sensitive because the bicycle is so lightweight it really changes where the weight distribution is when you fold the handlebars down if you move the seat if you remove the battery in and out especially so right now i have it in a fairly good position uh, where the kickstand is you know in a, in a nice sweet spot where it applies to all of those but in some cases you pull out the uh the battery and then the bike will start to tip so you got to adjust that little kickstand to get just the right spot and since it's in between the axle it's a little bit sensitive so that's something to keep an eye on but i think that covers everything so let's go ahead and jump on the bike my favorite part all right so here we go on the etura from furrow systems so yeah this bike is definitely made for a last mile option uh, this would be a bike that you would take in some other form of travel you could put it in the trunk of your car like i listed or you could put it in a plane or maybe a boat or a train even um, so you'd take this thing with you on the metro or something like that and then you would use it for that last little bit so that you can go you know uh much much faster <laughs> much faster as you're getting to your destination as opposed to walking and that's really what this is this bike is not the alternative a bike like this is not the alternative to uh riding a different bike in most cases someone who's looking at a bike that this that is this lightweight and this easy to fold up and so tiny they're comparing this to the uh, uh alternative of walking so yeah i think compared to walking this is a blast this is great and I think it'll allow we'll let a lot of people to get into electric bikes that otherwise would not. Um, so yeah, pretty fun. Let's go ahead and do a little turning here. Yeah, when if you have if you have this thing set up, okay, it feels pretty good. You know, it's uh, you got to tighten up a lot of little nuts and bolts, like I mentioned, some of the ones here in the stem or in the handlebars or the seat, perhaps. When you get all of that squared away, it feels pretty good. Uh, that display is pretty clear. You know, it's a little darker outside right now. We're getting up to 26 kilometers per hour so yeah it's a lot of fun you can tell that my knees aren't really getting a full extension and let's go ahead and try it this way you know it's it's different because i can feel it's harder to steer because i feel like i'm more on one of those little kick scooters because those things have little itty bitty wheels and as you know they got handlebars really high so when you get the rider weight up this high and you get those tiny wheels and kind of the extension on all of the uh the touch points for your hands and where your seat is then it definitely doesn't steer the same way i would say that for me you know i'm i would let's see for me i would say that i would ride it lower because it's going to be a last mile option maybe two or three miles or so i could handle that not extending my legs all the way and just kind of riding like you know like a, a smaller bike i'd be okay with that putting myself lower to the ground i think that when i put my weight up this high 
and I'm not I'm not a lightweight guy either. I'm six feet tall, about 180 pounds. So, you know, that consider that for what it's worth. But I think that uh, in this case, I would rather ride it lower. So let's go ahead and change that. Probably shouldn't be doing this on the fly, but here we are. Get a seat real quick. Lower that down to about there. All right. Okay, yeah, this feels a lot better. Uh, another thing about the power output is that it is a front hub motor. Uh, so front hub motors are fine for this kind of uh, application. I think they're all right. Um, normally with a front hub motor, you gotta be leery because if it's too far out in front and you don't have enough weight on there from the rider, then it can kind of spin out in certain spots. But in this case, it seems like it's doing just fine. I would definitely say that if you're looking for a lightweight electric folding bike, this is all of those things. It is super lightweight, folds up really small, and of course it's electric, and the electric system is perfectly capable. Perfectly capable. But if you're looking for like a full feature bike, then yeah, you're gonna be looking at totally different stuff. All right, so I got you guys pointed down at actually the, the entire bike. <laughs> Normally I'm pointing down at the bottom bracket here and perhaps the gears in the back. But in this case, you're actually looking at the pretty much the entire bike except for the, uh, the seat, which of course is up here, and the handlebars, which are just yonder. So anyways, I've got it cranked up all the way to level five pedal assist. So let's go ahead and take it for a spin, show you what it does. Okay, that's fun stuff. Uh, yeah, the bike definitely picks up quite a bit. It is a cadence-based system, so based on that one gear, you gotta get a little bit of momentum, but once you do, it really picks up, and I felt it assisting quite a bit, so yeah, it's great. Hey guys, so it is actually dusk of a new day. I've had some more time on the Furrow Systems e -Tura. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, as you can see, it has snowed <laughs> since I last filmed, so I've actually had a chance to ride the bike uh, in the snow and in some wet and slippery conditions. And I gotta say, uh, the, it really makes you appreciate what the bike is made for, which is that last mile uh, part of the drive. Uh, because yeah, when you start taking it off into slippery off-road sort of stuff, that's, that's uh, certainly a lot of fun, certainly very entertaining. But anyways, let me tell you about that last feature that I wanted to tell you about, uh, which is the turn signals. Pretty neat stuff. So here we got the bike once again. The difference is that we got this little guy recharged. Uh, so last time I pulled it off and tried to get it going, but it needed to charge. This little guy has its own little micro USB charge port right in that spot right there. And it does come with a little, uh, a little charger, a micro USB to regular USB. And that's how you charge this thing up. And then it has a small little light. You press on the power button on the top of the unit and a little red light comes on. And hopefully you can tell that little red light is not going to do you a whole lot of good for commuting purposes. You'll probably want to get an aftermarket light, attach it to the seat post, maybe your backpack. But in this case, this little light just tells you when the unit is turned on. And then coming up here to the uh, little pad up here, press on the left arrow and it blinks over there. And you can guess what that does. Turns on your left turn signal. So you got a few LEDs in there. Uh, looks like three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight LEDs in all showing you a left turn. And likewise, press the button like a motorcycle. You got to remember to turn that off. Press the right button again, and you got a right turn signal. Something that's kind of neat is that this little system is, as far as I can tell, it's completely independent. So you could put, if you can find a way to attach this to your bike or your backpack in some way that still keeps the display open and unobstructed, you could put this on a skateboard or a backpack or a kid's bike. Uh, heck, you could even put this on your friend's bike and make him signal <laughs> if you really wanted to. Uh, but yeah, that's the last feature. Oop, there we go. That's the last feature that I wanted to show you on the bike uh, to show up. And I'm glad I came out at nighttime or at least dusk to kind of show you that feature because it really doesn't show up in broad daylight. And that's kind of one of the things about turn signals in the first place. 
those little LEDs are not going to show up too much in broad daylight. I mean, it, you can't hurt, you may as well use it. But at nighttime when visibility is really important, then that's when they show up. So good thing for there. So thanks. Thank you for watching the review of the Etura from Furrow Systems. It's been a fun little bike to kind of scamper around. Honestly, the lightest weight electric bike I've ever been on uh, completely. So yeah, fun stuff. If you want to check out the full written review for this bike with all the pros and cons listed, as well as all the measurements and specifications, go to electricbikereview.com. While you're there, you can actually compare this with a bunch of other electric bikes that we've seen throughout the years and have some fun on the forums and kind of engage the community that way. So thanks for watching, guys. Ride safe.